Session 47 of Unit 4 of Industrial Relations and Labor Legislation of 6th Semester BB of Mangalore University. In this session, we shall study about the prerequisites or essential condition or the principles of a sound grievance procedure. An effective grievance procedure should contain the following characteristics. First is legal sanctity. The procedure should be in conformity with the existing law. It should be designed to supplement the statutory provisions. Wherever possible, the procedure should make use of machinery provided under legislation. The procedure may be incorporated in the standing orders or collective bargaining agreement of the organization. Second is acceptability. The grievance procedure must be acceptable to all and should therefore be developed with mutual consultation among management, workers and the trade union. In order to be generally acceptable, the procedure must ensure a sense of fair play and justice to the workers reasonable exercise of authority to the managers and reasonable participation to the trade union. Third is promptness. The grievance procedure must aim at speedy redressal of grievances. This can be ensured in the following ways. As far as possible, the grievance should be settled at the lowest level. There should be only one appeal. Time limit should be prescribed and rigidly enforced at each level. Different types of grievances may be referred to appropriate authorities. Next is simplicity. The procedure should consist as few steps as possible. Channels for handling grievances should be carefully developed. Employees must know the officers to be contacted at each level. Information about the procedure should be communicated to the employees. Fifth is training. Supervisors and union representatives should be given training in grievance handling. This will help to ensure effective working of the grievance procedure. Follow up. The working of the grievance procedure should be reviewed at periodical intervals. Necessary improvement should be made to make the procedure more effective. Let us see the points to be remembered when handling grievance. Every grievance must be considered important, no matter how irrelevant or insignificant it appears. A grievance should not be postponed in the hope that people will see the light themselves. If an executive is tired, in a bad temper or otherwise feeling out of sorts, he may courteously, apologetically and with regret postpone a grievance hearing. But he should never say something that would incur the distrust or enmity of the aggrieved employee. Put all grievances in writing. This is necessary to avoid ambiguity and to correctly determine the exact nature of the grievance. Gather all relevant facts about the grievance by the management and their proper records maintain. This will convince the employees about management's sincerity, integrity and honest of purpose. Full facts will also help the management in reaching a fair decision. Maintenance of record is essential for Future reference. Decision once reached should be communicated to the employee and acted upon by the management. If the decision is unfavorable, its legitimate foundation should be well explained. Directly meet the aggrieved employee and give him a full hearing, that is, listen to him. Discuss the grievance in private. Ask the union representative to identify specific rules or regulations allegedly violated by the management. Handle every grievance within the contractual time. 
find out whether the procedural requirements specified in the agreement have been duly complied complied with or followed with examine the personal records of the aggrieved worker treat the union representative as your equal identify the relief the worker or the union is seeking fully inform your own superior of all grievances follow up the action to determine its effects on the aggrieved employee reference